Welcome back to SOS. I'm Staff Sergeant Badass. Sippy Cup. We're just chilling, hanging out, mm-hmm. getting into some weird stuff and I, whatever. Whatever Sippy wants to talk about. This is... I, okay, so uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for more Sippy Cup. So if you want more Sippy Cup, I'm going to probably put a link below. It's going to be to my playlist. It's going to be the videos that feature Sippy Cup in them. So you guys can get more Sippy Cup by clicking that playlist and just play all the way through. Many of them as you like. That way you don't have to search for all of them. I'll have them all in there for you. It'll be called Sippy Cup or More Sippy Cup. How's that? <laughs> I thought that'd be kind of cool. There we go. <laughs> So what do you uh, what do you want so, to discuss? Well, with me, I love talking about medical stuff, especially, and that's what really gets my interest going. And I don't know, it kind of just hit me when I talk about antibiotics and the importance of knowing what specific antibiotic you need for specific ailments that you get. And I mean, because we know that if there was a catastrophe and people are hoarding all the pharmaceutical meds and you're grabbing all that antibiotics but do you know how to use your antibiotics because you can't treat tuberculosis with the same antibiotic you would treat maybe just you know a regular infection yeah so it's always good to know these things and uh, another thing is, well, from hearing, you know, other uh, YouTube subs- uh, YouTube channels, YouTube channels, thank yeah. you, that, you know, you should always up your book collection. Exactly. Like Pastor Joe Fox was saying. Yeah. And, you know, you got your PDR and stuff, but PDRs, I don't know if you've ever looked in one, they are a headache. You have so many different I've got one right there you want me to grab it no no it's I mean it's just so many different medications to so many what if ailments (sighs) in the prepper library that I did I talked a little bit about the PDR and how I don't understand it but she would get it she would be able to read through it and figure it out sort of but to the point it's it's a good book to have on file. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it is. And it's just like that pill book we've got. You know, it's just another good book just mm-hmm. to have a good reference. You don't know what you're going to find. Right. But another... Oh, yeah. You're my assistant this time. I'm sorry. So you get to hold the book. Microbiology. That, microbiology. Now, microbiology, you know, it sounds like, oh, my gosh, microbiology. But it tells a lot about, of course, you know, your bacteria and your microorganisms and... It just explains how antibiotics work with your different microorganisms. And antibiotic means it's a microorganism used against another microorganism. So. Do you need me to flip through this? No. Yeah. That's this is just it's a really good book. It is because. I like to go straight to sources, more like books, and from what my professors and. Like my past phlebotomy teachers have taught me, I I kind of get leery of online sources. I yeah. mean, I know there's legit ones like WebMD, but they really kind of don't go over the basics. Cause I mean, it's just they just want to just give you cut and dry stuff. But I mean, for me, I like to know exactly how is this microorganism, exactly. you know, going to work. What can I use to destroy it if I need to? So that book is is really good. You were saying that like nothing can kill it because it adapts to your DNA. Those are viruses, which I will talk about a little bit later. We had discussions before this. Yeah. And he helps try to keep me on track because I get really excited and I talk a million miles a minute. So I have just a couple little notes to make sure that I don't forget to talk about anything. But so, you know, and I'm just saying this because I'm not thinking people are stupid and they don't know what an antibiotic is, but it's, I never really put much thought into it before. You know, I just know, okay, antibiotic, all I know is it, it's there for infections. 
and learning more about it, I realized, you know, I didn't know as much as I should. I just want to share it out there. Yeah. And what, and one more thing like that real quick, I want to touch on in the middle of that is that other, uh, there are so many different prepper organizations, groups, and things like that. I mean, uh, look back at, for example, um, uh, uh, Doomsday Prepper was one of those things everybody would talk about these antibiotics. Like, for for example, the fish antibiotics that people say, you know, not for human consumption. They are fish antibiotics. But a lot of people will collect them, and then they have all the different names of them and stuff, and... Some will get them, not even know purposes, how to use them, when to use them, and... Um, if you should really use it. I could name off some big-name people right now that talk about that stuff, but I'm not going to name-drop anyone on in this, in this segment here. But um, a good one that we've always referenced is Dr. Bones. Nursing. And nursing. That, that is a great channel. Because mm -hmm. they're also a couple... It's good for it's good for knowledge. Mm -hmm. Good for knowledge. They've been doing that a long time too. <clears throat> and it's and it's good for people like us, the multi-channel, to discuss these things to get the information. So that it was like, boom! You just reminded me of something, or something you didn't think about. That's what we're doing this for. Mm -hmm. So going into kind of like the history of antibiotics, about how it got started. Um, was uh, back way back hundreds and hundreds of years ago there's a tree in Africa that's um, known to call, uh, cure malaria from the bark and the name Oops, sorry. it's a uh, uh, quinine I think it's called and well that's how it's pronounced I think that's how it's pronounced but when the Spaniards came over they noticed that these tribes people would use that bark and ta-da there's malaria cured and they decided to take um, a bunch of that bark over and make it more concentrated because the more concentrated of course it killed that malaria a lot quicker so uh, this that kind of stemmed an idea for this man called uh, Paul Elrich and it was like in the 1920s, and he thought of the magic bullet theory, where basically you can take something that will harm the invader and not harm the host. So, because, of course, I think a lot of people know that um, chloride is the best element to use against any deadly microorganism, but of course, you know, you can't take a cup of chlorine and drink it and it would hurt you yeah. and hurt the microorganisms. So he thought, well, that is actually a great idea. And from that, it kind of stemmed and evolved. And that's how antibiotics came to be. And a lot of, um, I would say it was over half of antibiotics found, um, are found actually in the soil. And they're mostly concentrated in tropical areas they're scattered all over the place but that's where they like to just feast is in soil of tropical areas so there's that and touching on well I guess kind of like the structures of microorganisms like their cells is kind of important to know because they're, they're a lot different than our cells and what we're made up of, which is good because that's why antibiotics work so well, like penicillin. Of course, everybody knows penicillin. That was the, the first great big antibiotic that was um, discover, discovered by Fleming accidentally. And, but unfortunately, with the penicillin, there came a lot of resistant antibi uh, bacteria to the antibiotics, so they kind of had to... Uh, grow some more type of synthesized um, antibiotics that's not just penicillin, but join it with a different type of microorganism. So from there, you got all the illins like amoxicillin. Um, that's where those came from. 
is basically, I mean, and that, that's one that's used a lot for children because, you know, you, if you don't really need to take your uh, antibiotics, it's kind of best to not overkill them because you're building up your resistance. Now, of course, you know, you always go by what your doctor says, but you know, in the end time scenario, mm -hmm. um, people don't need to freak out if you have like a common cold or, or what have you. Cause I mean, colds a virus anyways, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help. And their, their different cell structures is what determines what kind of antibiotic you're going to use. Like tuberculosis, their cell structure is more waxy, so there's no way penicillin is going to be able to penetrate and destroy that cell um, as the two, I wrote them down, as those two, I think you're sitting on it. I'm not sitting on Yeah, this. you're sitting on my nose. I'm sorry. As there you go. Uh, these two, there you go. let's see. Yeah, they can see it. Antibiotics. Um, isotinized, please don't badger me about my pronunciation. <laughs> That's why I wrote it down. <laughs> and F and butyl. Those are the two big leagues that are going to destroy tuberculosis um, compared to your penicillins. Do you think I should put these in the drop down box, the names? Sure. Okay, I can do that. And once again, I'm pretty much, I'm getting all this information from my microbiology book and my professors. So, um, any other medical people out there putting in their two cents, I don't care, go for it. Yeah. But, um. We're just helping each other. That's yeah. all it is. That's pretty much all it is. And, let's see, funguses, also you use antibiotics. And funguses are a little bit more trickier to kill off because, believe it or not, their cell structures are a lot similar to ours. There's only one difference, and which luckily that small difference is, um, well, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically that's where they create these other microbes that will destroy their cell walls, and that's why they're mostly lotions for like your dock itch and your ringworm and all that fun stuff. Gotta hate that jock itch. I gotta throw the sense of humor in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, I mean, that's pretty much antibiotics in a nutshell. It's just really important to know, like I said, what, what type of um, antibiotic is going to work the best or just work at all on whatever you have. And uh, just touching up on viruses, you know, of course, viruses, antibiotics, there's nothing you can do, um, especially uh, they like to come in and they have to have a host to survive and they latch on into your system and they will take the DNA and from you and they'll replicate it into their system. So, I mean, whatever you try to use that's going to hurt your virus is going to hurt you because now it's a part of you. But I mean, that's why they, they do have more drug resistant, um, well, viral drug resistance, uh, medicines for, you know, like people with HIV. So that way, um, it basically keeps the virus from replicating itself. Cause I mean, you do have natural, um, defense modes in your body from your white blood cells, uh, your interferons that basically it lets the virus come in, but it'll say, Hey, I'm sending this chemical message to my buddies. Don't, don't let this critter come in you because it's a virus. So don't let it replicate. So the virus can come in the cell, the cell won't destroy it, but it'll just say, you're not replicating inside me. So it stops the virus. And that's what those antiviral loads are for. It's to keep the um, the viruses from completely uploading into your system. So I think that's pretty much all I got for antibiotics. So you covered pretty much the basics of antibiotics mm -hmm. for the most part, and um, viruses. Yeah, and viruses. Viruses are the worst.
You know, when you were talking about colds, mm -hmm. I, I had to stop for a minute because dog was over here whining at the door. I just wanted to. I was about ready to go get the dog because he's over here like. Mm. Uh, he probably wants another biscuit. Anyway, <laughs> he's a needy fella. All right, so uh, like the common cold, it would probably be best to just fight it off yourself. Let your body do its thing instead of wasting uh, any type of anything. Yeah, I mean, anything even. I mean, because, I mean, the, the things they have out for colds, it's just to soothe your ailments. It's just to kind of make you more comfortable. Um, because when you have a fever, that's your body's way of, another way of it to kill off the infection that's inside you. Now, of course, you don't want your fever to go too high because then yeah. you get seizures, brain damage, and stuff. But that's what you know, is a big indicator that you have an infection. And uh, what my phlebotomy teacher told me, because she was a nurse for many, many years, she said, you know, there's over 300 different types of colds. And, I mean, once your body recognizes one cold, you're not going to get that same cold. Um, you might get it like 30 years later down the road, but that's why you get so many colds is there's so many different strains same with, you know, your uh, flus. They mutate. And, um, yeah, I mean, just because you get a immunization shot, that's why it doesn't yeah. guarantee that you're not going to get the flu because sometimes the flu strain will change. I did, yeah, I didn't want to sound like an idiot or anything. I just wanted to kind of add that to it because it's, it's like how you and I, we don't really take anything for a cold anymore. We, I, we haven't in freaking years taken anything, but it's usually just because I learned that from you where you just let your body fight it off and I'm over here. I've got to go get all this stuff and, and it, now I don't do that anymore since, since she's kind of taught me how to deal with it. And then I'm, I, I seem to get over it faster than I normally would. And it's always important to do the recommended dose, no matter how good you feel, because especially for tuberculosis, um, in the midway when you're taking your antibiotics and you feel great, you're like, yeah, I kicked this out, I'm awesome, I'm good. Now, there's still the little bit of, um, of that microorganism still in you, so when you stop taking it, boom, it explodes and it comes back with a vengeance and... That's why you always finish it through. Finish it through. If you get issued antibiotics for anything, finish it. That's a big, big deal. Uh, what was the other one thing? Like the, the the other problem with like end time scenario and antibiotics and stuff like that is the young, young, young and the old, old, old is going to be the problem. It's it's going to be unfortunate, but the young, young, young and the old, old, old might not make it. And it's just something that we think about with, you're not going to have your normal situations where you can just go to a hospital anymore. So you're just going to have to cross your fingers and hope it works. That's going to be a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people in the middle of that, good chances. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, I thought that was something really yeah. cool to know is just... Um, it, is that the uh, the quinine bark um, to have? I mean, people who travel to Africa for their safari tours or whatever. Um, I know you get your malaria shots, your immunizations and such, but who's to say malaria won't take on some other crazy mutation? But, you know, I just think it'd be good to know. I'd want to know, okay, where's the picture of this tree? What does it look yeah. like in case if I need some bark I can just uh, boil it or just eat it however and, and feel idea. better it's just something good to know I know some people are going to be like oh you're so stupid why would you even <laughs> think that there's immunizations dummy yeah. but <laughs> why not why it's not? just better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have the information there you go dang it just take it for what it is take it for what it is yeah exactly it's the best thing to say mm-hmm you got anything else? Not that I could think of. I hope I didn't miss anything, but...
Well, if you missed it, you'll probably be like, oh, dang it, I missed that. And it'll be later after I already uploaded the video. I blew it. It's okay. <laughs> She'll come back okay. and tell you later. She missed it. All right. Uh, I'll put some links below. I'm going to put a link in there for more Sippy Cup for all of you that wanted it. I'll make the playlist for you guys. I'm getting a lot of requests for it, so I might as well make a playlist. It ain't going to hurt nothing. It's just a channel. Uh, so if you go through my playlist, there's a lot of funky stuff in there, and I'm going to try and get it more. Well, it is pretty organized, but I'm going to put one in there for that specific thing, for you guys and gals that want to see more CP Cup. Because I've, I've had people say, man, uh, finally, another CP Cup video. I'm, I'm, and Thank you. We're, we're both like, they do know there's more Sippy Cup videos in the playlist. And I said, hey, check this out. I didn't even know that. And they totally freaked out. So there you go. I'm going to make a playlist just for more Sippy Cup. So that way you guys can find it easier. Easier on you. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you. And please like, subscribe, and share the videos. Get them out there, okay? Get them out there, all right? We really appreciate you guys. We good. wouldn't be here without you guys and gals mm -hmm. and children of all ages and small pets. All right. We love you guys. You're watching SOS. I'm Stop Star Bat Badass. Sipping up. <laughs> Take it easy. Mm-hmm.